ओके लेट्स बिगिन सो यस्टरडे वी डिफाइंड द सेट एफ एल ऑफ फॉर्मूलाज फॉर अ प्रेडिकेट लैंग्वेज एल एंड देर आर फोर डिफरेंट क्लॉजेस ओ एक्चुअली आई फरगॉट समथिंग so uh, if r is an m ari predicate symbol then and t1 t2 tm are terms in context x bar yeah i mean x1 x2 x, uh, xm r xk are appropriate variables for those terms then r of t1 comma t2 comma tm that is a formula yeah formula is something which can be either true or false depending on the assignment so f1 prime so we treat the only binary relation symbol in the meta language namely equality symbol specially so that is f1 prime so t1 comma t2 uh, are terms then t1 equal to t2 is a formula yeah i mean ideally it should be considered over here but equality is always interpreted as the diagonal relation so that's why we don't want to uh, mix these two things up third uh, so f2 is the clause which says that if phi is a, phi of x bar is a formula then so is negation phi and if phi and psi are formulas then so is their conjunction so this is something that you already know then f3 is the new clause and that's what the first order logic is all about it's quantifiers so this is we are only talking about there exist okay so if phi is a formula and phi wj slash xi is the expression see by expression i don't mean formula you simply take all the occurrences of xi and replace them with wj then whatever expression you obtain you put there exists wj at the front and then that becomes a formula why we are doing this because we always want to use the letter w for quantified variables or bound variables yeah that's why we are doing this and the most important clause is nothing else is a formula everything should be determined by just these four clauses okay so some bit of terminology here yeah the formulas in fl which are only constructed using f1 and f1 prime they are called atomic formulas why would they be called atomic formulas because they <coughs> are not generated by using smaller sub formulas yeah they they are unbreakable if you think about negation phi yeah negation phi is actually obtained from phi phi conjunction psi is obtained from phi and psi so there are sub formulas of that those expressions whereas once you consider these two there are no sub formulas so that's why they are known as atomic formulas and an appropriate name for formulas constructed using only f1 f1 prime and f2 that's quantifier free formulas right so that's another thing <coughs> now one thing that we have to uh, talk about is the set of variables or the contexts yeah so i'm going to use uh, blue color to denote that yeah i mean uh, this is the set of free variables okay so if t1 t2 tm are terms in context x bar then what are the free variables in r t1 comma t2 comma tm free is something that is not bound by a by a by a quantifier so there is no quantifier here terms do not contain any quantifiers right then uh 
So le let me write this. So the set of free variables in R T1, T2 up to Tm is equal to the set of variables in one of the terms. You understand this? Suppose my term uh, T1 is x and T2 is y, r is less equal. Then what is the set of free variables? x comma y. Right? I am taking union over here. You can see the set of variables in, I mean, let, let me call it variable, then maybe I will also call free variable f var and set of variables in the terms ti, you take unions. Yeah, simple thing. We are keeping track of the free variables over here. Okay, what is the set of free variables in t1 equal to t2? Any guess? The set of variables in T1, union, set of variables in T2, nothing different. Then the set of free variables in negation phi x bar is equal to the set of free variables in phi. We are not going to change anything. Then for conjunction, yeah, I am going to write it over here, free variables in phi conjunction psi, that is the set of free variables in phi, union set of free variables in psi. So free variables are the variables which actually occur in, the, in those formulas. Okay? And finally, now, this is the most important thing. So far, we are only taking union, so it is boring. We have to cut down the number of free variables at some point and this is the place where we do it. So the set of free variables in there exists wj phi wj replacing xi is the set of free variables in phi and remove from there xi. So xi, if it occurs, then we remove it. If it does not occur, then we keep it as it is. But set subtraction is that. Yeah, A minus B is the collection of all those elements in A which do not occur in B. Right? So therefore, what we are doing here is we are simply removing xi from the set of free variables of phi. Because xi was replaced by wj and wj is attached to a quantifier. So, therefore, it became a quantified variable or a bound variable. So, therefore, it is no longer a free variable. You understand this? Let us do some exercises. Without that, you will not understand what I am saying. So, give me some simple example of an atomic formula. Let me say uh, in L set, give me an atomic formula in L set. X equal to y. Right, x equal to y. This is an atomic formula. What else can you say in L set? No, that is not an atomic formula. Negation is not an atomic formula. So, x equal to y is the most general form or x equal to x or x equal to x are atomic. Give me some quantifier free things. Right, negation of x equal to y, uh, conjunction z equal to y. Now, this is a this is a quantifier free formula. <coughs> I 
and uh, at this point I will also ask you what is the set of free variables in here. So free variables in each case x equal to y what is the set of free variables? Huh? Just x? x comma y. What about this? Just x. What, uh, what about this? Okay, whatever I am writing in blue letters that will always be the set of free variables. Now tell me something more complicated, a quantifier included formula. What about our, uh, okay, for all x there exists a y such that negation x equal to, oh sorry, I should not do this. Suppose I start with x equal to y, yeah, then I am just going to show you some transformation. I am going to replace y by w1. Then what expression will I obtain? x equal to? So, this is a formula, right? This is not a formula, but I can, op I can write there exist after this. So, now I am just going to apply this and going to say there exists a w1 such that x is equal to w1. This one is a formula, okay? Now, Tell me what is the set of free variables in x equal to y? What is the set of free variables in this expression now? X. X. Yeah, we removed y. Okay. Now, uh, again I am going to say that replace x by w1. Then what will I obtain? Uh, there exists w1 such that w2 equal to w1. This is not a formula. And finally, I apply there exists w2. So, what will I obtain? Uh, there exists w2, there exists w1 such that uh, uh, w2 is equal to w1. This makes sense? What is the set of free variables for this last formula? Empty. Okay. Now, here comes an important definition. Say that phi of x bar in FL is a sentence. if the set of free variables of phi is empty. Denote the set of all sentences, set of all L sentences by S L. Have you seen this notation before? S L where? Propositional logic. So, they are all sentences. They are formulas, but in particular they are sentences. Propositional formulas do not use any variables x i, do they? Propositional variables are nothing but zero array relation symbols. So, zero array relation symbols that do not use any free variables at all. So, therefore, they do not use any quantifiers. The set of free variables in them is empty. So, that is why we use the same symbol there, SL. 
Any questions about this? Okay, maybe we should uh, formally write down. Yeah, for all WJ phi x uh, phi WJ replacing xi is a short form. For negation, there exists Wj, negation phi Wj xi. Think about it, okay. When we say something exists, there exists a Wj satisfying certain property. At that time, we are saying, it is not the case that, sorry, uh, if we say that for all Wj some property holds, so we are saying that it is not the case that there exists a witness where phi does not hold. Understand? That is why for all is negation, there exists negation. Okay. Hopefully everybody got this. Yeah. Huh? Can you please yes, I am saying for all WJ phi holds, what is the meaning? That it is not the case that there is a witness, witness as in there exists a WJ for which phi does not hold. Right? So that is why we are writing for all as a replacement for negation, there exists negation. But please do not write negation, there exists negation. After there exists, there should be a bound variable. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, suppose my formula is, let us uh, go to some other example. Let us say orders. Now, can you tell me the definition that the there is no upper bound, there is no maximal element. How can you say that? There is no maximal element in a poset. There exists a chain. What is a maximal element? For everything x greater than or equals to y, x not is equals to y doesn't hold. For every x greater than or equal to y, x is equal to y doesn't. X is equal to y doesn't hold. For all x. Yeah. If I write this thing down, yeah. Uh, I mean, we are supposed to use bound variables. Now, first of all, tell me that there is no maximal element. What do you think? Which kind of formula will it be? Will it be atomic? Will it be quantifier free? So, it will be quantified. And what will be the set of free variables? There should be none. Yeah, it should be a sentence. We are talking about a property, right? If you talk about this property, then it is uh, like directly either true or false in a given poset. Correct? So, something which does not depend on assignment of variables, that is a sentence. It is either true or false. Okay? So, this is the sentence which says that for all W1, there exists a W2 such that R R W one W two. Now this one expresses that. Can you see that? I mean, what should be R here? Less than. 
less than yeah for all w1 there exists a w2 such that r w and w2 that is that is less than yeah so this is uh, this is a sentence yeah when r is interpreted as a strict partial order then it says there is no maximal element for every element there is a strict upper bound that is what it means to say that it there is no maximal element but if i interpret on the other hand r as an equivalence relation then this statement is still true if r is an equivalence relation then this is still true right what does it say for all w1 there exists a w2 such that r w1 w2 what w2 can you choose for a given w1 w1 itself right so you can see uh, yeah i mean if r is interpreted as an equivalence relation then this sentence is true i'm just going to give you some hints yeah to understand i mean it's the same sentence but it means something different if you interpret r differently it says there is no maximal element in one case in the other case it says i mean it is always true what do we need we only need that the relation is reflexive as soon as it is reflexive this sentence is always true even though we haven't said what is truth of a formula yet i think all of you can understand that this sentence is true in a reflex when r is interpreted as a reflexive relation so formulas themselves do not mean anything that's the purpose of writing this yeah they are just formulas okay so this is a sentence and you can write down the construction of this sentence like this what do you start with r x y then you replace one of the variables by w2 the second variable then you put a quantifier and after that again you replace the other variable by w1 and then you put a quantifier right so you understand how it is constructed okay good so let us do something more complicated so in l ring yeah i think we should do the example that we talked about so uh maybe i should remind you what l ring is right now i'm just going to use this notation f g h uh c and e okay can you tell me what is f plus so it is binary g is multiplication it is binary h is subtraction so that is unary c and e are constant symbols so there that's zero ary okay now let us write down this so is x a term yes is y a term then is g of x y uh, sorry maybe i should say g of x x is a term 
Similarly, g of y, y is a term and then f of that is also a term. Then h of c is a term and f of that is also a term and this is a term and 0 and uh, e is a term and equal to is a formula. Okay. What does it represent? <laughs> right. Not circle. It is simply the equation for circle. It does not mean circle. Circle is when you interpret this formula. Right now, it just describes the polynomial equation for circle. Yeah, I mean, our normal language, we would write x square plus y square minus 1 is equal to 0. This is the equation for circle. Okay, so everything can be constructed as a formula. And see, now we can ask whether it is true or false. Is this expression true or false? Well, depends on values of x and y. But if I had not written this part equal to 0, then we could not ask whether it is true or false. At that time, we could only evaluate it. Right. Okay. Now, what if I say, start with this formula. This is a quantifier free formula. Suppose I call this formula phi x y z. x y z is a context suitable for this formula. Yes, because the set of free variables is contained yeah, in this. Maybe I should write that. Yeah, please uh, write it. So, say that. x bar is a context suitable for a formula phi if the set of free variables in phi is contained inside x bar naturally. We do not care about the bound variables. yeah. So, x bar should never include wj's. Okay. Let us go here. So, now I am going to say replace by w1 the variable z. What do I obtain? Same thing. And then apply there exists a w1. So, I will write there exists a w1 such that x square plus y square minus 1 is equal to 0. What is the set of free variables for this? x comma y. So, z was not present, but we could still replace it with this. I mean essentially these two formulas are the same. But are they same or similar? They are not exactly the same. As formal expressions, they are different. But they are similar. So, eventually, what will we show? They are, they are logically equivalent. Correct? If that particular variable does not occur and then we are replacing it with a bound variable, then what is the problem? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the only thing is that here I cannot write z, I, I can only write phi x y. But phi, this phi x y z and that phi x y, they are equivalent, not necessarily equal. I have not yet defined logical equivalence, but I am showing you that you can bound any variable which may or may not occur in that formula. We have to allow this. Yeah, just for formality, we have to allow these things. Okay, good. Now, perhaps, uh, 
can you tell me in an appropriate language a sentence which says that in natural numbers after every even number there is an odd number when i say after every even number what am i referring to plus 1 or less equal less equal so i need less equal in my language okay then what else do i need i want to express that something is odd or something is even how do i express that there exists a natural number such that x can be represented as 2 into 10 plus 1 or something 2 into something is 2 part of any language so let's fix the language okay so this is an example now here i am trying to explain to you how you can write down ordinary mathematical statements as formulas hmm? so we want to express for each odd natural number there is an even natural number greater than it okay so we have to do lot of things but perhaps we can break this statement down a bit first of all we need to understand what is even and what is odd for even and odd uh, i mean he was talking about multiplication by 2 but what is really multiplication by 2 f of y y yes so basically yeah you are on the correct track you are only using addition to describe multiplication right some number is even if it can be obtained by adding one number to itself right that's even so we have to express that so we need something to say addition to describe addition right and what else do we need in our language we need less equal greater than it yeah so we need less equal and what else do we need we need one in our, our language right because we want to express odd odd is something times 2 plus 1 so we need one so what should we have i mean the the structure that we the least structure that we need is n then we need plus then we need one and then we need less equal okay what is the language for this structure language is obtained by always hiding this part so one binary function symbol one constant symbol and one binary relation symbol so let me write down the language it consists of f which is 2 then e which is 1 and then r which is 2 yeah this is my language right now okay now let us break this particular statement down it says that if a number is odd then there is something which is greater than it such that the number is even so perhaps if i have a formula which says that phi odd and it is true at a particular natural number then there is a some uh, something such that such that w is even and 
and what else? W is greater than or equal to x. Now, so R x W and perhaps you should say something more because R is interpreted as less equal. So, what do we need to say? And x is not equal to, yes, very good. So, I should put a parenthesis around here and then say negation x equal to W. So, what does this particular statement represent? So, please pay attention to the brackets, yeah, how I am bracketing it. So, it says that if x is odd, then there exists a w which is even and which is bigger than it. But the statement asks for each odd natural number, for each. So, we should replace x by another bound variable. So, maybe I should use w2. Yeah, so, for all w2, now I will put a parenthesis, if phi odd w2, then there exists a w such that it is even and r w, uh, w2 w negation uh, w2 equal to w, then one bracket closed and then this bracket closed. Okay, so, this should represent what it is. Now, tell me what is phi even? So, what is phi even z? Uh, Let us use W3 now. Huh? Very good. F of W3, comma W3 is equal to Z. Yeah, easy enough. Now, as you can see, I needed, I have already used W and W2. I needed a new variable and that is why we started with a countable set of variables. I needed a new symbol, so it was available for me. Okay, what is phi odd? There exists a w4 such that f of w4 w4 1, no, not 1. What is the symbol here? E, right. E and this is equal to Z. If you interpret your F, E and R in a different way, yeah, this will, this particular formula will express something totally different. So, the meaning of formulas like converting our natural statements, mathematical statements into formulas is perhaps easy, but interpreting them depends on the choice of structures. Okay, so, perhaps now you are ready to understand how to describe interpretation of formulas. Yes? Oh, I mean implication is not there, but you already know how to write implication as a derived connective. Yeah, so uh, negation, this or that and that or is again using De Morgan's law. I have already taught you propositional logic. Yes, so you are capable of doing that. <laughs> okay, let us proceed now. So, the truth, yeah, I mean this is truth. Uh, truth of a formula in FL. Okay, I want to understand the truth, but I should be given the data. Yeah, I mean just now we saw that we need help of a structure to understand something. So, suppose F 
suppose phi x bar is a formula for L and M is an L structure. given a tuple a bar of length uh, a bar in m of length equal to x bar so what suppose the context is x1 x2 xk then i should be given a tuple a1 a2 ak yeah. Say that the formula phi x bar is true in M at A bar written, how is it written? M satisfies phi at a bar if yeah I mean the following happens. So, this is where our double turnstile has been introduced yeah. So, how do you read it? Yeah, it is a complicated way of reading phi is true in m at a bar and notice that I am using curly m because I want to talk about the structure and not just a set. Another thing that you should notice, I mean before I complete the definition, another thing you should notice is I said a bar in m. I mean technically speaking this is wrong. Yeah, what I should be writing is a bar in m to the power length of a bar. But in logic, this is a common practice to suppress that power. Yeah, when we say a bar is a tuple from M, then I simply mean a bar is a tuple, I mean each of the elements of a bar is an element of M. Yeah, only in logic we do this, yeah, not otherwise. You cannot say that phi comma 7 is a tuple in R. Yeah, it is a tuple in R square, but in logic we allow that. Okay. Now, uh, the definition as usual should proceed using recursion. Okay. So, T1, T1 for truth 1. Yeah, if phi x bar is r t 1 x bar t m x bar for some m r e relation symbol r and terms t 1 t 2 t m then M satisfies phi at a bar if and uh, if I mean this is definition so that is why I am not using if and only if I am just using if the tuple now ok. So, T1 is a term we know how to interpret T1 at in M how to evaluate it it is a function and we are evaluating that function at a bar then t2 at a bar dot 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 tm at a bar now this is all of them yeah t1 t2 tm when you evaluate at a bar you will get a single element in m so so far we have an m tuple of elements of m and this m tuple should belong to the interpretation of the relation symbol R in M. So, whenever we think about less equal, yeah, when do we say less equal x y is true in natural numbers 
at 5 comma 6. When do we say that? Less equal x y. So, x is interpreted at 5 comma 6 as 5. y is interpreted as 6. So, 5 comma 6 belongs to the relation less equal. What is the relation less equal on natural numbers? It is the collection of all pairs where a is less equal b. So, we are writing simply that. Yeah, it belongs to the relation. Okay. If phi x bar is t1 x bar equal to t2 x bar, then m satisfies phi at a bar if t1 m a a bar is equal to t2 m a bar. Yeah, here the interpretation of the equality symbol is the diagonal, diagonal relation. Yeah, these two elements have to be equal. Okay, sorry, this is not T1, uh, T2. Yeah, this is T, T1 prime. Okay, T2. If phi x bar is negation psi x bar, then m satisfies phi at a bar. If m does not satisfy psi at a bar, yeah, I mean not does not satisfy. I am writing with a line across the double turnstile symbol. If phi x bar is uh, psi 1 conjunction psi 2 x bar, then m satisfies phi at a bar if, can you tell me? m satisfies phi, uh, psi 1 at a bar and m satisfies psi 2 at a bar okay and t3 if phi x bar now i'm going to use a slightly different notation so please pay attention if uh, phi x bar is there exists a w uh, w j of psi x bar w j where psi x bar y is a formula. Okay, what did I do? Psi x bar y is a formula and this formula is obtained by replacing variable y by wj and then putting a quantifier. Yeah, so this is more appropriate. I am not saying wj replacing y. I am simply replacing wj in place of y. Yeah, that's that's more appropriate. Okay, if uh, then m satisfies phi at a bar if now there exist as a quantifier will be interpreted as there exist in semantics. If there is some B in the universe such that M satisfies psi at A bar comma B. If the inside formula is true, when we substitute some b for that w, think about it that this is precisely what we do.
I should do one example yeah, before we leave. Yeah, perhaps uh, uh, let us say the same example that we were trying to do here n plus 1 less equal uh, yeah, and I will only talk about phi even z. Hmm? So, n plus 1 less equal yeah this is my thing and then satisfies phi even at <coughs> 5 if what is the definition of phi even let me go back there exists a w3 such that f w3 w3 equal to z yeah i mean n plus 1 less equal satisfies there exists a w3 such that f w3 w3 equal to z at 5 okay there is a there is an existential quantifier over here so when when will this happen if and only if if there is some b let us use the letter b in natural numbers such that such that what will happen the remaining thing is true so f w3 w3 now i am going to say f b comma b is equal to now z interpreted in oh i mean uh, perhaps i should i should be a bit more careful sorry i will write it more properly i will use another notation so x hasn't been used here okay so i will use f x comma x is equal to z this formula when evaluated at phi comma b is true if and only if what will happen now we have to interpret this formula yeah this is a formula of <coughs> constructed using what which clause f1 dash it is equality of two terms so it is f1 dash if and only if i will continue writing there is some b in the universe such that n plus 1 less equal satisfies now how do we interpret this something equal to something let me show you t1 dash was if their interpretations are same huh. so the interpretation of f is plus yeah i am just going to say and x is interpreted as i mean this is the location for z this is the location for x right so uh, if and only if i mean plus of b comma b b and b are interpretations of x at phi comma b and z is interpreted as 5 right now we can say but is is it the case that there is some b such that b plus b is equal to 5 no so therefore i mean ultimately our claim is going to be it is not satisfied yeah I mean this is how you write things and that is what we do you can read formulas you can understand whether they are true or false everything goes on here but you have to learn how to write it on a piece of paper it is interpretation of a formula in a structure at a tuple yeah there are so many things and it takes time to get used to this language 